part of the WestConnex project, a section of Lilyfield Road has been suggested as a route for trucks going to and from the work site in Roselle Bay. They're going to turn off the City West link at Balmain Road, then turn right into Lilyfield Road, travel down the hill, and then turn right at Catherine Street and cross the bridge over the railway line. <laughs> Let's have a quick look at how well trucks and bicycles mix together when they're on the road. With that intro out of the way, we should all be able to agree that trucks and bikes are two things that don't really mix together that well. This video will only cover this section of the route, which is one way. A further video may be produced to cover the route along Catherine Street and then Brennan Street. There are two issues I want to cover. The first is the risk of being overtaken by trucks going down the hill towards Catherine Street and that resulting in a cyclist going under the wheels of a trailer. The second is the risk of a collision between a cyclist and a truck at the Catherine Street intersection. But let's take a trip down the Leafield Road from Balmain Road and have a look at this stretch. Because of the reasonable slope going downhill, it's easy for cyclists to ride down towards the Catherine Street intersection at 45 to 50 kilometres an hour. However, even though many cyclists come down the hill at close to the speed limit, that doesn't deter some drivers from wanting to overtake in this section, generally before hitting the brakes and then turning right into Catherine Street. It's bad enough being overtaken by a car on this stretch. It'd be pretty terrifying being passed by a rigid truck and trailer, particularly when it is single lane each way and there is plenty of potential for a truck driver to pull back in too soon and crush a cyclist under their trailer. For this reason, truck drivers on this route must be instructed not to overtake anything on this section, no matter what speed the person in front is doing. That should be common sense anyway, but there are drivers who are happy to overtake cyclists in situations where they would never overtake a motor vehicle. The second issue is that of conflict at the Catherine Street intersection. This can either take the form of truck drivers trying to squeeze past cyclists where there is a concrete island in the middle of the road, or more likely, cyclists going up the left of trucks waiting to turn right and squeezing past the trucks. I'm using this bus as an illustration of what can happen. To a cyclist, that gap down the side of the bus is enormous. It might not look like much, but there's plenty of room there to get through. That gap is about as wide as a lot of bike lanes around Sydney, and it is certainly wider than the notorious underbridge along the Cooks River path. It's wider than some of the shared path lanes that cyclists have to use around the detours at the Anzac Bridge. Of course, the problem is not the width of the gap. It's the potential for the bus or truck to start moving and turning whilst the cyclist is alongside and sideswiping the cyclist as the rear of the vehicle swings out as it makes the turn. Why would a cyclist shoot through this gap next to a heavy vehicle? Simple. Cyclists are no different to anyone else. They are just as impatient and prone to take risks as car drivers and there is the added problem of a hill just up ahead. If you can maintain your speed in this section, you can use your momentum to slingshot up the hill at a good, at a good pace. If you slow down here, you're stuffed. There is a lot of incentive to blast through a gap like this and maintain as much forward momentum as possible. The alternative is a low speed, low gear slog up the next hill. The last problem is conflict between cyclists riding up the hill going west and trucks coming down the hill and turning into Catherine Street. Cyclists have the opposite problem when heading west in the afternoon. Due to the gradient, the ride up towards Balmain Road is one long slog. Instead of going past Catherine Street at say 40 km an hour faster like you do in the morning, you're generally reduced to puffing past at 20 km an hour if you're lucky, or fit. When traffic is heavy, such as during the afternoon peak, some drivers attempted to just pull out and ignore the requirement to give way to traffic going straight ahead, especially if that traffic is a cyclist. I've had close calls at this intersection with bus drivers who should know better. Trucks with trailers are of course much longer than buses and they lack any side underrun protection. So failing to give way to a cyclist traveling, traveling west has the potential to be deadly. Without getting into detailed traffic planning, I'm suggesting two options to fix this. The first is to have traffic controllers on this intersection whenever truck movements are taking place, with their aim being to prevent conflict between trucks and cyclists. 
The second option is to remove the garden bed on the left, but leave the outside curb in place. The idea is to provide a pass-through lane for cyclists, a lane that is protected by a concrete curb which ensures trucks won't stray into the bike lane. In case you think that doesn't happen, let's revisit this concrete truck. That's my two cents worth. That's 15 years worth of experience boiled down into five minutes.